Viewer discretion is advised. You're in a circus, watching a series of spectacles of humans performing impossible acts. The man who swallows and breathes fire, a clown who can vomit any insects from his mouth, a beautiful lady with blossoming flowers for hair, enchanting everyone in the audience. And then a steep ramp is being set up with a big motorcycle set up on top of it, and suddenly it went down the ramp and then flying towards you with incredible speed. With nowhere to run, you look to your side and see a man stretching his mouth as wide as the car and swallows it. He looks over to you with a grin that stretches from ear to ear and says, hope you're enjoying the show. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a SCP Foundation Euclid class object, SCP-2094. SCP-2094, also known as Motor Mouth, which takes the form of a European male in his 40s as of the current year. There are several tattoos that depict circus motifs across his upper body. He speaks English, and more specifically, in a New York accent. He is also very proficient in juggling. All these sound very normal, just like any human being you would bump into on your way to do groceries, until he stretches his jaw and pulls his facial muscles in any direction for up until two meters. You might squirm at the imagination of performing such a feat yourself, the pain, the horror. But for 2094, it's just as painless as breathing. This is because 2094 is the subject of an anomaly originating within its oral cavity, which allows it to redirect any physical matter that enters its mouth to an extra-dimensional organ. As there are no limits to how much 2094 can store within himself, you'd be surprised what the Foundation has found hidden in his mouth, from things as small as a lighter to things as huge as entire, fully functional sports cars. Additionally, all these items don't weigh down 2094 at all. Why can't our clothes have pockets like that? Just in case you're wondering, why is 2094 called Motor Mouth? That's because he talks a lot. So anyway, hear me out. I've got this fantastic idea for the circus. So what I want you and what other people to do is to just pull my mouth and stretch it so wide and then let the car- I swear, I'm gonna vomit a swarm of bees all over your face if you don't stop that motor mouth of yours. Aw, oh, gee, my bad. I guess I talk a little too much, but hey, I really like the sound of that. Motor mouth. Motor mouth. Oh, what would my name be without you now? So anyway, what you guys will do is to stretch my mouth wide enough, won't you shut up? He also performed tricks where a huge motorcycle went flying over a ramp and sailed into his mouth. What a fitting trick for his name. As for his containment procedure, well, he stays in a room of one of the Foundation facilities. He is taken care for and given certain luxury items under the supervision of the Foundation personnel. He wasn't captured, and he didn't really surrender himself to the Foundation either. So, how did he end up here? He was sent to the Foundation by his family. Well, not his actual family, but his family from the Circus of Disquieting. As a kid, 2094 was born and raised in a broken family. His father left them before he was born. Unlike 2094, his mother was just a normal human, and she hated him. After she noticed that 2094 could perform the inhuman act of pulling his mouth wide open like a monster child who would swallow an adult whole, she locked him up at home for fear that he would consume another human being, should he be allowed to the outside world. In return, 2094 hated his mother with a passion. He would utilize his inborn ability to torment her. Sometimes, he would sneak out and bring back woodland creatures such as snakes and spiders in his mouth and unleash them in the house. Additionally, although timid, 2094 was cunning. Utilizing his childish innocence look, he would walk up to his mother with one of those adorable eight-year-old smiles and then spit up a couple dozen rats onto his mother's lap. Until one night, when 2094's mother was sleeping, a man with an upside-down face appeared at his window. He would later be known as Manny. Freaks like me and you don't belong being cooped up in boxes, he said with a smile from ear to ear. We belong out in the world, sharing our gifts, making people laugh and scream and puke. Instead of being afraid at the sight of the man's horrifying upside-down face, 2094 was excited because he had finally found someone else weirder than him if not just as weird. Come with me, 
to a place where you'll be loved by hundreds, where you'll be a star, where you'll have a real family, said Manny. And so 2094 joined the circus where he learned that there are other unusual characters just like him. And finally, he received love that his real family never gave. But soon, as time went on, 2094 noticed something wasn't quite right with the kids that were brought into the circus. He thought they were just the usual kids rescued by Manny from broken families, just like he was. Something in his guts made him feel uneasy, but he couldn't quite tell what it was. Until one day, when he met a new member of the circus, a little girl who could fall into pieces and then put herself back up again. 2094 was teaching the girl how to juggle, and suddenly she broke down and started crying, saying she wanted to go home. At that moment, that was when he knew that deep down, what he feared and hoped that it was just his own imagination was true. Manny has been taking kids against their will. And so 2094 confronted Manny. This isn't how we do things anymore, Manny. We don't abduct kids, said 2094, hoping to change his way but all he received was a harsh slap across the face. I'm just doing what's necessary to keep the circus alive. It's on the verge of collapse, can't you see? Defeated, angry, 2094 knew he had to do something about this. He must save the girl. Using the only way he knew how, he hid the girl inside his mouth and sneaked her back to her home through the kaleidoscope, a portal in the circus that allows people or things to pass through to any destination. And finally, the girl was saved. A small victory for 2094 and the integrity of the circus. When Manny found out what 2094 did, he furiously accused him of betraying the circus, his family. Manny gathered the members of the circus around and locked 2094 into a car trunk, which was soon recovered by the foundation team. 2094 had stayed in the containment facility ever since. But still, something from the past troubled him. The following is the footage of what happened as he woke up abruptly one night. He started to leap from his bed and began knocking his head violently against the wall. Stop it! Don't, please, don't take anything! He screamed. He clutched at his head tightly as he was seemingly tortured by the memories of his past. He screamed again, and this time he mentioned a name. It's all I have now, Manny! It's all I have! Later, when he was asked by the Foundation interviewer, he couldn't remember what had tormented him during that nightmarish fit and fallen into a period of depression. He had lost parts of his memories regarding the events that led up to him being locked in the trunk by Manny. Perhaps there was something more to it than a mere scuffle between them. Over time, as he regained his usual cheerful mood and playful demeanor, he told the interviewer that he has also regained parts of his memory, but wouldn't say anything about them, except that they are things that he wished he could forget. Viewer discretion is advised. So how about this? We set it up like it's a normal daredevil routine, with a guy on a huge, loud as hell motorbike, flying off a ramp, jumping over an audience member, but of course, I'm a plant in the audience. He flies off the ramp, but he doesn't have enough speed. He's gonna crash into me. I scream, the audience screams, everyone screams. But then, at the last moment, I open wide and swallow the bike whole. What do you think? Your act is dangerous enough when someone else is holding your mouth open, let alone opening it at the last second. It's quite the idea, I'd say. Herman Fuller's voice and the knock of his cane boomed across the tent. Many entered the trailer after Herman. The danger, the drama, the excitement. That's what people are looking for. Risk is what pushes us to be the best. Risk is what makes the crowd cheer. Motormouth, I approve of your show. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we're bringing you a tale from the SCP Foundation, SCP-2094 Motormouth. As the room clapped and cheered in feigned excitement to appease the owner of the circus, Herman Fuller noticed Icky's pensive mood. Icky, is something wrong? You know that I don't like it when people are quiet, you especially. After all, a circus is no place to be quiet. So speak up. No, sir. I'm just thinking of the show. Manny saw Herman was about to explode again and intervened. She's just planning the show like she always does. You know how she is. Herman slowly turned to face Manny. So you're speaking for everyone now? Is that it? 
Or has your brain sunk so far down these days that you've started thinking with your mouth? Sir, Mr. Fuller, with all due respect, I don't think we should take the risk, given how many people we've lost lately. We're running low on people. We should really minimize the risk we take. Herman looked at Icky and scoffed. He walked across the room and circled around her. Suddenly, he stopped pacing and put his hand on her shoulder. Icky could feel his grip was getting stronger. Icky, Icky, why don't you let me worry about things like safety and think about performing your best instead? Or are you the one in charge now? No, no, sir. Good. He tapped her shoulders and walked back to where Manny stood. All of you, remember who's paying you, feeding you, and taking care of you. Me. Who's the ringmaster? Me. All of you would be nothing without me. I made you. Remember that. He tapped Manny's leg with his cane. Manny and Icky exchanged a glance before he followed Herman out of the trailer. I should go prepare for my, uh, show. And his performance went as planned. Motormouth was seated among the audience, with a hat and a trench coat sloppily thrown on top to conceal him. He looked around the circus, but couldn't see Manny and Icky. Usually, they'd be around to oversee the performance. Herman was nowhere to be found either. He couldn't help but think about the future of the circus, and he couldn't see one as long as Herman was still in charge. His assistant clown suddenly yanked at his jaw, pulling it wide open. It jolted him from his deep thoughts. The heavy bike was flying towards him. The bike slammed into his half-open mouth, or at least part of it did. The other part crashed into the audience. The circus closed up for the day after the accident. D don't worry, Mr. Fuller. I'm fine, really I am. Just a little scratch around my face is all. I'll be back again to perform tomorrow. Fine? Fine? Do you know how much you've cost me? Herman raised his cane and brought it down on Motormouth's back. Do you know how much money I've lost in a single night because of your carelessness? You've caused damage to the set and injured my customers. Our reputation is ruined! Herman screamed as he wailed at Motormouth, who could only cower on the ground. Icky, Manny, and the rest stood around as Motormouth accepted the beatings. It was too much for them to watch. And there goes my cane, again. Herman chucked the broken cane at Motormouth. He adjusted his hair and jacket. Clean up this damn mess. He put on his hat and made for the exit. Motormouth groaned and Icky rushed to his side. I'm fine. Just need a little rest and I'll be right as rain. Icky opened her mouth, but she couldn't find the words. She had seen Motormouth injured before, but not like this. How many times will the same damn thing happen? How many people do we have to lose before things start to change? This needs to stop now. Manny looked at Motormouth and left the room. The next day, Motormouth was resting in his bed. He covered his ears as the staticky screech of the circus's antiquated PA system crackled through the air. Attention, all employees are to report to the ringmaster's tent immediately for a very important announcement. All employees, don't make me repeat this. Motormouth watched as clowns and freaks dropped what they were doing and hurried past him left and right. By the time Motormouth arrived, a large crowd had already assembled in front of the ringmaster's tent. A small stage had been erected, with a drawn curtain concealing what was no doubt an unwelcome surprise. Everyone seemed to be ill at ease, with a few furtive murmurs the only sound to break the ominous quiet. Motormouth ducked off to join the other freaks. He squeezed through the crowd and made it to Icky, who took her place at the front of the clowns. What's going on? Motormouth, you shouldn't be up yet. Must be something big to call everyone out. Where's Manny? Before Icky could say anything, Herman strode onto the stage. He had got himself a new cane, but looked unusually forlorn with a handkerchief clutched in his hand. Friends, I'm afraid I have terrible news this morning. As he spoke, he dabbed at his tears with the handkerchief. As you all know, Manny has been with us since the start. However, that ends today. He pulled down the curtain behind him, revealing the man with the upside-down face hanging upside down by his ankles, with his arms bound and his mouth gagged. Manny! He had the audacity to question my leadership and my care for all of you. I have to say, it's so nice to finally see your face the right way up after all these years. Calling me a paranoid, strung up. Who's strung up now? You! I was beaten almost to death because of you. For all of the talk about looking out for us, what a hypocrite you are. 
It was your idea, remember? It was not my fault that the bike crashed into you. The rest of the clowns and freaks remained silent. You can't kill him. Oh, my dear Icky. You see, this man here tried to sabotage our family. He wants to remove me as your loving caretaker. You're not gonna let traitorous scum like this tear our family apart, will you? That's it, I've had enough. Icky drew out her deck of trick cards. All 54 cards were engulfed in a red aura, and they went flying towards Manny and cut through the ropes that were binding him. Herman hurled his cane like a spear at Icky, but Motormouth was able to open his mouth wide enough to swallow it. Icky called back the cards and held them around herself in a defensive posture. How dare the both of you. I feed you, clothe you, house you, protect you from the SCP, and this is how you repay me? All these years, you've done nothing but terrorize us. We performed for you. We died for you. But what did we get in return? Nothing but fear. Your reign of terror ends now. Motormouth spat a huge gobbet of spit towards Herman, who wiped it off his face, his hand trembling in anger. If you want something done right, Herman clapped and the curtains of the tent flew open and out rode a procession of two dozen penny-farthing bicycles mounted by ghastly creatures that looked like a human circulatory system made from twisted, rusted wires. Their arms were long enough to touch the ground and their gangly necks were too weak to support their drooping heads. Kill all of them. Nobody disobeys Herman Fuller and lives. I can replace all of you just as easily as killing you. A green fire flared up inside the chest of each penny farthing, smoke and flame wafting out of every opening. They howled as if in maddening pain and began assaulting the crowd in a wild frenzy. Icky threw her cards at each monstrosity's wheel. Motormouth reached down his throat and pulled out his submachine guns. Get down, all of you! The clowns and freaks all ducked as Motormouth spun around and emptied both his guns. Herman whistled, calling one of the penny farthings to him. He leapt onto its back and rode it into the den of freaks. He came out only seconds later, wielding a cutlass, trying to find Icky in the chaos. He thought that if he killed her, he could quell the rebellion. Her, Manny, Motormouth, and anyone else who had dared to speak out against him. There, in the middle of the battle, he saw her. So focused was he upon his target that he didn't see Manny rushing towards him, ramming a tent pole through the spokes of his penny farthing's wheel. As Herman was thrown through the air, he saw all of his penny farthings were destroyed. And now, folks, for my last trick. Icky, hold my mouth. Icky grabbed the inside of Motormouth's right cheek. Another clown grabbed the left, and together they pulled his mouth open nearly 10 feet. Herman flew right down his gullet and into his second stomach. And the crowd goes wild. Indeed, the crowd burst into victorious cheers at the sight of Herman's demise. You got him? Yeah, but this isn't long term. I'm worried any second you might come bursting out of me like an alien. Don't worry, I have a plan. I've got the kaleidoscope up and running. The three of them ran to the kaleidoscope, where a portal leading to a black abyss was waiting. On three. They stretched open Motormouth's mouth, and on cue, he regurgitated Herman straight into the abyss. Herman screamed in rage, and as he tumbled into the portal, his hat fell off his head, landing on the floor. Good riddance. Now what? Icky thought for a moment and walked back to the clowns and freaks. Folks, good people of the circus, Herman Fuller is no longer with us. Those who wish to stay may stay, and those who don't, you may do as you please. The crowd looked at each other. Some hesitated before they left, and some went without a second thought. So, is this it now? We just disband? We won't, don't worry. Herman didn't do anything but bark orders, spend money, and kill people. I can run this circus fine without him. Better, even. Does that mean you're going to be the ringmaster? Manny <laughs> chuckled at the suggestion and placed the hat on her head. No, I don't think I have the face for it. The ringmaster should be a little easier on the eyes. Someone who's a good performer and a good leader. Yeah, have to say, the hat doesn't look as nice on you as it does on her, Manny. You can't be serious. Why not? You've been here almost 40 years. You know this circus inside and out. The clowns love you, and anyone else who's not afraid of clowns loves you. Icky thought for a moment and embraced them. So, what sounds better? Icky the ringmaster or ringmistress? <laughs> What the hell was that? One second she was all innocent-like, the next she became a horror!
Ah, great. Whole place on lockdown. Things just got complicated. I can smell those pests. And I'm getting bored. So let me out. Heh, <laughs> sure. And let you eat me alive? I might as well just surrender now and let them shoot me. Take you down with me as well. How about that? Huh? <gasps> I've told you all I know. Just let me go. If it's up to me, I'd have you strung up and shot. What an elegant solution. See, this is why you never get promoted beyond grunt work. Ooh, I'm so done with your yapping. You! Hey, hey, stop that! We're professionals, goddammit, so freaking act like it! Uh, what the? When did you? Heh, <laughs> slide ahead. Learned that from my esteemed colleagues in the circus. <laughs> Time to bust out of here. Christ, how the hell do you guys navigate this mess? Is there even a directory? Keep your eyes open for him. That rat couldn't have got far. Now spread out and find him. I want that bastard alive! Ah, oh, crap, I gotta hide. Come on, come on! There! This should keep me out of sight for a while. Huh? Who are you? Oh, hey there, little Goyle. I'm, uh, wait a minute. You're the Goyle they call, uh, Zero Five Three, ain't ya? Hmm? Huh? Yeah, I've heard some crazy thing about you, and I could use a powerful ally right now. Are you here to play? Yeah, actually. How about a trip to the circus, eh? Circus? Yeah, there's clowns, balloons, animals, all kinds of freaks. It's gonna be fun. Can I bring Lizzie with me? Of course! Bring whoever you want. I'll even treat you to some popcorn. How's that sound, eh? Yippee! I always wanted to go out and play with Lizzie and friends. What the hell? That girl's a witch. Snuff her out. Are you okay, mister? Stay! Stay away! Ah! Strange man. Go back and choke the life out of her. What are ya, friggin' wimp? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! SCP-682. Wait, that's Lizzie? She's friend with a friggin' immortal dragon? Warning. SCP-053 has breached containment. All personnel, do not attempt to recover the anomaly on your own. Ah, screw it! Crap, why did I even come here? What is this stench? Probably not the smartest move there. Ah! Just stay a while, eh? Sit back and get cozy. I'll release you when I feel like it. Plus, you seem important to that little coil. Would be a shame that you and her never get to meet each other again, eh, buddy? <sighs> you just bought yourself a one-way ticket to hell, buddy. We'll see about that. Code red. SCP-682 has breached containment. Repeat, SCP-682 has breached containment. All personnel, please remain calm and retreat to your nearest blast shelter. I see you're quite the fan favorite around here. There he is. Jesus! <laughs> what the hell was that? One second she was all innocent-like, the next she became a horror. Ah, great. Whole place on lockdown. Things just got complicated. <sighs> I can smell those pests. And I'm getting bored. So let me out. Heh, <laughs> sure. And let you eat me alive? I might as well just surrender now and let them shoot me. Take you down with me as well. How about that? Man! Three anomalies on the loose! Can the day get any worse? Tell me about it. 
I hope I don't bump into 053 or 682. But the other one, though, I can take him. Cheeky bastard. You heard what the higher up said? They want to try something new with 053. Yeah, something about an injection that'll kill her ability. I hope it works. I've seen too many people die from a heart attack every time they try to attack her. It's about time that stops. You hear that? They're gonna do something to the girl. Filthy pests. Huh? <gasps> oh, hey, it's you. How'd you get here? Have you seen Lizzie? I went to his room, and he's not there. Well, um... No! No! <sighs> you can feel the nature. Your heartbeat quickens. Your mind filled with nothing but rage. Kill. Ah! Must. Resist. I can't. What do you mean, filthy? I ain't clean. Got my veggies and stuff. Anyhow, as long as I don't harm her. Aha! What are you doing? I restore if you lay a finger on her. Oop, that'll do it. I'm keeping her out of harm's way by keeping her safe inside my stomach. Lizzie! <laughs> ah, what a sweet reunion, eh? Found you! Ah, for Pete's sake. Can't weasel out of this one now, can ya? I can sense them. Those pests. Friends? Uh, guess we have to do this the hard way. Let me out. I can help you. Ugh, I hate this. You want to get out of this place, yes? Well, so do I. I want to go to the circus with you and Tattoo Man! Circus? Yeah, I told her I'd take her to the circus. Guess I'm taking you with me too. But to let you out... Give it up now! You've nowhere to run! What? You're gonna pull a Houdini right now? <laughs> well... Holy sweet mother of Jesus! Feels good to be free again. Are we at the circus yet? It's showtime! <laughs> Eat lead! Right back at ya! <laughs> so... What now? Haven't had this much fun in a long time. <laughs> I'm bored. Well, why don't we go to the circus right now, eh? Circus! Circus! Yeah! Now then, big guy, you don't mind if me and little lady here ride on top of ya, right? We hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Have a favorite SCP you want to see on this channel? Leave us your suggestions in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you'd like to see more SCP content, then check out some of our other videos right here. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.